found out that Phil Negro passed away. He was 81 years old. This is a guy that pitched 24 years in the big leagues. He won 318 games, uh, pitched until he was 48. When I think of the knuckleball, Dan, I think of this man's face. Greg, and, and it's a horrifying pitch to throw to have to rely on. As he said in that piece, this pitch has a mind of its own. And unfortunately, if that's your main weapon, there aren't very many pitchers or pitching coaches, one, that know how to throw it, two, that know how to teach it, and three, know how to help you when things are going wrong. You can't go into the bullpen and say, hey, let's work on spin it. A lot of people think of the knuckleball, and they think that you throw it with your knuckles on the baseball like this, that's right? Not, that's, that's not, not, not how do. it's thrown. It's thrown with your fingernails. So knuckleball pitchers grow their fingernails a little bit longer, and the fingernails go into the ball. You don't throw it with your knuckles. You throw it with your fingernails indented into the ball, and the ball comes out, and it has no And then spin. you just let go? You, you just, just let it go. It's almost you just throw the ball, and you don't have a lot of wrist action. It just comes floating out of your hand, and the last thing you'll feel is your fingernails in the cushion in the leather of that baseball, and it comes out with no spin. And it is the most horrifying thing to catch. In 1984, Tom Candiotti was making the transition from a conventional pitcher to a knuckleball pitcher. And I decided one day that I wanted to play catch with him before a game, and he started throwing the knuckleball. And I'm not kidding you, Greg. It is the single hardest pitch to ever do you ever think you'd want to catch because it has no spin. And your eyes can't gauge how fast it's coming. It's coming at you, and it's just waffling. And it, it, you have no idea if it's – when you're playing catch and you can see the spin on a ball, you can tell which way the ball is going to move or yeah. dart. But with a knuckleball, it's coming at you with no spin. Yeah. And you think it's coming straight at you. It could duck down. It could duck down in a way. It's an impossible pitch. It, it worked for him. In 1967, he led all baseball 1.87 ERA. Uh, like I said, Phil Necro pitched until he was 48 years old. So your paths did cross in your playing career, correct? 1987. Now, I didn't have much to do with this game, but in this game, Phil Necro was the losing pitcher. Here's Dale Swain with a ground ball. For six plus innings, we won this game four to two. And the only reason I remember, I came in in the ninth inning with two outs to get one hitter, a little soft line drive right here to Dale Swain. And BJ Surhoff <laughs> gives me a hug right there. And he says, Really? You got paid for that? Three pitches. <laughs> Three pitches and picked up a save. It's funny because you were the opposite of a knuckleballer because back in 1987, you had one of the top two or three fastballs in the sport. Yeah, I was throwing so hard at that time. You were throwing close to 100 miles an hour. But what Phil Necro to me meant, he obviously didn't have the stuff that we're used to seeing of a Bob Gibson or a great ace, name your ace, that dominates with incredible velocity, Nolan Ryan. But he was a workhorse. He... You know, so many innings, so many seasons. We're going to a six-man rotation. I think it's the new in vogue thing, and so many teams are going to do it. What that means is one less reliever. So you can't tax bullpen arms more than we're already doing it. I know we're not going to get a knuckleballer more than likely, but are we trending in a direction where maybe we are valuing a Lance Lynn more than ever before or a Mark Burley and what he brought to the table? Guys that don't have the creme de la creme stuff, but have that slot in the three through five spot in a rotation, and their job is to give you innings, which is what Phil Necro did for 24 years. Greg, you're, you're dead on to something that has to change in the game of baseball because we are developing pitchers at a fast rate. Like, teams don't want to waste minor league innings with guys, so they're rushing guys to the big leagues. And if you look at box scores throughout baseball right now, five innings is considered a strong outing. Uh, yeah. But we're seeing more and more teams going through more pitchers and younger pitchers, guys that aren't ready physically or professionally. They haven't thrown enough innings. We've seen more hit by pitches than ever before in a, strike, in a shortened season last year. And it's in a short schedule, there were more batters hit in the history of baseball in one season. We have more guys that throw hard, that throw harder than ever, but the velocity and the accuracy is way down. And we're going to have to start treasuring and rewarding guys that can eat up innings because it's so valuable. And it's 
at some ways the game is so smart. We've advanced so many ways as far as teaching and technique and video and all kinds of ways to help hitters and pitchers. Yeah, we've almost become too smart and we think, OK, just have a guy go as long as he can for as hard as he can. And we'll just keep finding guys and we'll keep doing it that way. But you're going to see injuries are going to continue to mount. We've seen a rash of Tommy John surgeries like we haven't seen before in the last five to seven years. Most pitchers that haven't had it looks like they're eventually going to have it. Now you and I, the running joke, well, he hasn't had it. Well, he'll have it and he'll be better when he comes back. And that's sad. It, it really yeah. is. Yeah. Too smart. It's funny you say that because I wonder if the late Phil Necro thought that when he was watching game six of the World Series.